right, welcome to another episode of Bucking Around. I'm Cody Coleman, and joining me today from across the pond is my new friend, Jamie Crotty. Jamie, you approached me, actually. Well, you approached Jim, or Jim approached you. I don't know. But you were talking <laughs> to Jim, and you were like, hey, like, I'm a fan from England. Like, maybe that'd be a cool thing to put on Bucking Around or, like, just talk to you guys about something yeah. and, like, get that connection. And then you got sent my way, and here we are. And we're here to talk to you about why the hell <laughs> would you put yourself through this depression of being a Pittsburgh Pirates fan. Well, you didn't have to. <laughs> I know, yeah. Well, um, it's always been, you know, a bucket list of mine over the last, um, you know, 10, 11 years of being a fan to, to do a podcast. And um, it's an honor to be on Booking Around. I think it's the perfect show to do it. So, um, yeah, I'd love to explain, give some insights into to why I put myself through this this pain year on year, um, pretty <laughs> much every day. And, and, yeah, you know, hopefully give some insights into what it's like to be um, an MLB fan, you know, in, in England and, and how the sport's growing in, in, in this country too. So, yeah, it's an honor. I'm, I'm really pr- privileged to be on, actually. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. I mean, when it, when Jim told me, he was like, hey, there's this guy who is a Pirates fan. I was like, okay, like we're all Pirates fans. <laughs> he goes, no, he's, he's from England. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but before we get into all that, Tell me a little bit about yourself. I know we were talking about some footy before this. Like, what what's your background in like sports in general? Whenever yeah. it comes to fan, and just tell us about you, man. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, I'm so I'm I'm 25 years old. I'm from Liverpool in England, so that's the home of the Beatles. Um, I'd like to apologize to anyone listening. I, I do have a very northern English dialect. Um, so I'm gonna try my best to to speak as you know, as, as westernized as possible so everyone can understand. So, um, no, man, be you. Yeah, be yeah. So, I, I mean, that's a, <laughs> there's a similarity between Pittsburgh and Liverpool already. We have really thick, strong accents for sure. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge sports fan. I, I definitely say my number one sport is, is, is football, or I'll call it soccer for the, for the podcast. I don't like calling it soccer, but I will try to. Um, so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of Everton, who are playing the Premier League uh, in Liverpool. Um, my parents actually met each other at an Everton game. So I, as you can imagine, you know, it's been a, a crazy household my whole life uh, in football. And yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of all North American sports too. I, I've got sports on pretty much every day, whether it's you know some of the more English sports like you know snooker and cricket. Um, but I'm a big fan of like baseball and um, you know hockey, NFL. I've been watching the Steelers this season. It's been it's been very difficult, um, and I'm starting to lose a little bit of interest in that. And that's that's funny considering I'm a, I'm a Pirates fan, but. I've struggled with the Steelers this year. It's been it's been very difficult. Um, but yeah, I mean, any any opportunity I have to watch sports, I'm 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 always like, you know, I'm loving it. Um and yeah, it's it's a big passion of mine. I'm quite obsessive. I think that's why MLB for me is is a great sport, because I get to, you know, watch the pirates every single day for like half a year. Um, so I think it really feeds into the kind of passion I have about sports and just having something to be angry about each day, I think it's quite cool. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not very political. I, I, I'd rather be angry about sports and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you talk about being a Steeler fan. It might that might be out the door soon for you. But that, I used to tell people, <laughs> like, you know, they they ask me, "Why are you a Pirates fan?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, I'm a Penguins fan. I'm a Steeler fan. I'm a Pirates fan. They're all Pittsburgh." Yeah, And the only reason, like, because back in the day, like in the early 2000s up until like mid to late 2010s, you know, Steelers, Penguins, very good. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm a Pirates fan because the Pirates keep me humble, you know? (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I don't get too high. I don't get too high in the highs and you don't get too low in the lows because – You've you've seen the championship banners go up and you've seen them never come, you know. So <laughs> I think being a Pittsburgh sports fan in general is just the perfect mix. Yeah, for sure. I mean, every single team I support are just absolutely terrible. Like I I I I'll include the um the Steelers in that for sure. I mean, I've 
you know, my Premier League football team ever, and like they've never won a trophy in like the 25 years of being alive. Like they're pretty much near the bottom of the table most years. Um, you know, my first three years as a Pirates fan were amazing. I had no idea what it was right. like. It was like, you know, three playoff seasons. I was like, now I know what it's like to be a, a true Pirates fan for sure, um, which I'm kind of grateful for. Um, and I, I got into the Steelers in 2013 too. So they've been, okay. I, I can't remember them being really good in the last 10 years. Right. I think probably the best team I've, I've followed is, is the Penguins, to be completely honest with you. They've, they've actually had some, I've actually seen them win, you know, Three championships now, so I'm pretty back to back pretty cups, pleased. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the the Penguins have given me hope, uh, I suppose. But um, even yeah, I, I like the Brooklyn Nets in the NBA too. And I thought when they got like okay. you know Durant and Harden and Kyrie Irving, I was like, I'm finally going to see you know some six. And, then... and the biggest the biggest <laughs> failure. So if, if if anyone's a fan of any teams and you see me on on Twitter and I'm I'm like supporting them, it's like expect the worst. I think that's probably. Uh, that's just part and parcel with, with me as, as a sports fan. I, I, but yeah, as you said, it, it keeps me humble. I think supporting a lovable loser is quite, it, 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 it does keep you grounded. Um, and you have very high highs and very low lows, I'd say. Yeah. So, like, you know, you bring up the Nets. I think you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you can convince me to be a Nets fan because I live in like New Jersey, like right across, like getting to Brooklyn isn't too difficult for me. Yeah. So I want you. We're gonna get off the Pirates for a second. Screw okay. baseball. Convince me why I should be a Brooklyn Nets fan. Because I have That's friends a... that are Nets fans, and they're just like, "I'm a Nets fan, man. I don't know what to tell you." And I just, you... I need another perspective. Yeah, being a Nets fan's interesting. Like, I mean, my kind of route into into all American sports is being through video games, um, and it's no different for you know for the for the Pittsburgh teams, but. I started with, like, when I was really young on PS2, I had, uh, like, NBA 2K6, I think, and, like, Jason Kidd was, like, my favourite player, and he played for the new for the New Jersey Nets. So I've just always had, like, an affiliation for them. And um, being a Nets fan, it, it's quite interesting because, like, when they've become the Brooklyn Nets, I feel like there's, like, a new fan base. So it still feels like, even though they've been going for, like, 13 years now as the Brooklyn Nets, it's still feels like a new fresh thing and i think a lot of people are still deciding like what is the reason that they support the nets but um you know they're a good young team and um, quite entertaining and i i would imagine i'd say the most positive thing is you can probably get to that's for pretty cheap at the moment they're not the hottest team in town they are having a decent <laughs> season to be fair but um, well, it is I, in New York. Everything's expensive around here, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I've n- I've never been, but um, but yeah, I, I'd imagine they're probably on the lower echelon of NBA tickets. So I, I don't. I mean, the Nets are like probably like you know fourth in the pecking order in terms of like my North American teams. So gotcha. it's it's one of them. It would get into if you really like mediocre sports, which uh, you you clearly are. Then I think the Nets are the team for you, Cody. Uh, I think you'll en- I think you'll enjoy them. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to – maybe I invest in a jersey or something or maybe a T-shirt. I know I had – I think I had a Nets T-shirt back in the day. But anyway, yeah. you mentioned that you got into American sports through video games. So, like, yeah. take me through that timeline. Like, what was your first video game that got you into an American sport? What's your favorite? Tell me all about that, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's quite interesting, actually. It, it's a it's a weird way that I, I fell down the um, the Pittsburgh rabbit hole, I call it, because you know Pittsburgh. I mean, no offense to anyone who is from Pittsburgh, but certainly from an English perspective, it's not like you know the hottest city that like everyone talks about. Like generally, uh, growing up, you know, people talk about Los Angeles, they will talk about New York, you know, uh, Dallas and and stuff like that. But um. I remember when I first got a PlayStation 3, um, you could download demos. You couldn't do that on the PS2. So I used to download like demos of different games. And um, I downloaded the demo for NHL 2K9. Um, and basically, they gave you two teams. It was the Detroit Red Wings and the Pittsburgh Penguins, you know, from the 2008 Stanley Cup. Right. Um, and so uh, basically... To give some context, like there's there's two football teams or two soccer teams in, in Liverpool. There's 
Everton, who's my team, and we play in blue. And then there's Liverpool, who's, you know, the much more famous team, and they play in all red. So, like, red's, like, my least favourite colour in the entire world. Like, <laughs> I've never worn it. I never will. I'd never drive a red car. Like, we, we do not have red in, in our household. It's, like, you know, it, it's it's a no-no because, um, we're you know, we're so we're quite – we get called bitter as, as fans, but, you know, it's all rivalries. So, um so yeah, I used to play as the Pittsburgh Penguins, you know, on this this demo, this game, and I, I I loved playing it every day. It was like it was so fun. You could have fights, you could crash people into the boards and stuff like that. And um, so I mean, in terms of like one of my favorite sports games, I'd definitely say NHL Two K Nine is one of my favorite sports games. But um, you know, after a few months of playing that game, um, I, I just remember flicking on the TV. And uh, I saw that there was a, a an NHL game on, and it was the uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the uh, the Hurricanes, the Carolina Hurricanes, and it was in the playoffs of two thousand and nine. Um, yeah. And when I turned it on, like I, I was like, oh my god, I, I know every single player on this team. Like I knew all four lines, I knew all the rules, and I knew who were the good ones, who were the bad ones. I was like, oh, Crosby's the best. I love Malkin. I knew like even like all the fourth liners, like Tyler Kennedy and stuff like that. I was like, right. I was recognizing them. So I was absolutely hooked by like the Pittsburgh Penguins instantly. I was like, this is great. And um, I remember like, you know, each morning I, I'd check on Google to see if like the Penguins are, are played. And I, 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 you know, viewed every day and saw that they'd won the Stanley Cup in 2009 against the Red Wings. Um, so when I was watching the highlights again, I, I knew all like you know like Zuckerberg. Oh, is it no Zetterberg? Sorry, Zuckerberg. And um, I know who you're talking about, but I forget. He was like not a star, but he was like he helped not, us win. No, I, I was on the. He was a Red Wings player. He was like the main. He was like Zetterberg. Oh, he was, was like the captain. Oh, I know who I was Red thinking Wings. of. It. Yeah, uh, Z- yeah, Zuckerberg. Okay. What's his name? Love. <laughs> yeah, I've, whatever is I bet you someone. I, know, I think this. I know who you're talking about. I just, I'm not the biggest hockey fan, so you yeah, probably yeah. know more about the Penguins than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah. So uh, someone right now is listening, probably like got their he- heads in a hand. They're like head these stuff. idiots. They yeah. straight on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say like the the 2009 Stanley Cup and like kind of learning about NHL was my introduction in, into you know the city of, of Pittsburgh and and the, the teams. Um, so I had like an, an appreciation for them, and I used to buy like the new NHL game every year and, and always played as the Penguins. And then in about I'd say 2012, uh, on Twitter there was a, a fan group, and it was called the British Pens Fan Club, and it was a bunch of crazy oh, nice. people. Uh, from you know all around uh, Great Britain that were like Penguins fans, they all had the jerseys. They'd, they'd stay up to like two, three a.m. three a.m. in the morning to watch all of the games, like tweet along. Like a lot of them were like flying out to Pittsburgh too, and and like you know going to the games, you're getting interviewed on Root Sports and everything. So these guys were like my heroes. I was like these are the <laughs> coolest people in the world. Um, so that was like my first kind of you know insight into into the Pittsburgh culture and actually interacting with you know people online who supported the Penguins and, and were fans and I started to learn about like you know the dialect and about like the ins and outs of the city people are talking to me about Primanti brothers about you know the bridges and, and I really started to learn about culture you know like calling people yinzes and, and, and stuff like that it, it was it was so yeah that's where I started like the real connection to Pittsburgh um, began. Um, and then I, it was just the opening day of 2013 Pirates season that, you know, someone was like, okay, you're going to watch the, the Pirates this year? I was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll check them out. I've never wa- really watched baseball before. Um, and it was a game against the Chicago Cubs. And I remember watching that game. I think I, I'll never forget watching McCutcheon's first uh, at bat. Everyone had hyped me up and, he struck out and I was like, oh yeah, I wasn't too impressed. Um, but yeah, as you can imagine, it's, um, you know, from that day, I've, I've always followed the team and that, that 2013 season, I'd love to get into it more, but it was like, for me, it was such a special year in my life. And it's, you know, the reason that I'm, I'm fortunate to, you know, still be a fan and, and be doing the right. podcast with yourself. Yeah. 
yeah, I agree. Like we're we're around the same age. I'm 26. You're 25. That like the that Pittsburgh Pirates season, like you know, I be I became a a bigger fan probably around 2010. Like whenever you know McCutcheon came up in 2009. Yeah. It's like this. He's the future. So I was like, as a Pittsburgh guy, I'm like, okay. Now's the time to actually pay attention. Like my parents have been taking me to games because it's the cheapest ticket in town, but now I should actually start paying attention because I think they're going to be good. Then it yeah. took three years; they got to the playoffs and everything. But that that 2013 season, as a teenager, your formative years, to have that, yeah. it just it holds a special place in your heart. And I'm I'm glad to finally meet someone who I like. You, you're not even from America. You're not even from Pittsburgh. <laughs> And it, it touched you probably the same way that it touched me. And that's just yeah. an incredible thing. Yeah, it was it was honestly like the most special experience. Uh, you know, as I've said, I've not had many amazing sport moments, you know, from all the teams I've supported. So I'd say, you know, the 2013 season, it it's so special to me. I mean, the first big memory I have it was so I, I watched the opening day game and I was like, uh you know that wasn't great. I they, they, they definitely lost. That's for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then a couple of weeks later, I just it was a Sunday. I was like a teenager. I was doing nothing. So there was a game, and it was the uh, the Pirates versus the Cincinnati Reds. And um, so I turned it on, and, and pretty m- much like within the first couple of innings, like the Pirates were losing like by five runs. It was five zero, and I was like, yeah, this team's terrible. Like I'm not spending time watching these. And then. Uh, North Shore Nine legend uh, Michael McHenry. Um, he hit two <laughs> two home runs in one game, and I'm like, "Oh, we're tied." And then Starla Marte launches one into left field, and I was like, "It was the first time that it felt like this." Like I was like, you know, jumping up in my bedroom. I'm like, "Yeah," I was. It gave me such a rush, and I realized that like baseball is like that sport where it can just turn so quickly, like. A couple of walks, a, a hip batter, and then one bad pitch down the middle, and like one huge bomb, like a, a buckle blast, and the game can just be like completely different. I, I think that's what kind of hooked me. Um, is just like the intensity of the game and like the way things can change so quickly, and now pretty much every single second of the game, um, you know, has an impact. You know, each pitch is important. It may not seem to anyone that doesn't. You know, follow baseball certainly when you know my parents are watching it with me or like if i've got it on they're like my dad's like you know what is this can we watch anything else but this um but yeah that that's where like i kind of um you know learned about like what the, the excitement anyway and then to see the journey and to because you know i didn't know much about the pilot so i learned through that year that they had, had 20 years without a winning season and like all the pain that people have gone through since 1992, obviously with you know the game against the Braves, and then like to see the team just build and battle, and like you saw like Garrett Cole do have his debut, and like all these special things to the point where they firstly got the winning season and then made the playoffs, and to that you know the the big moment when they had the uh, the wild card game, like I remember watching that in or just on a little smartphone like an iPhone four, right. and it felt like i was there it was just like that was i think I've, I've watched a lot of podcasts i think a lot of people especially around like our age like they say that's like the best moment of of, of, of any pirates fun and certainly my top moment for sure uh, the wild card game was special it was emotional too because i'd felt the emotion and i knew what it meant to people and like seeing people jump into like the river and stuff it was i, I was i was always going to be a pirates fan there was no you know i could never not support another team and um, right see that was pretty much like i'd say that that period from downloading a, a small video game where there was two teams and like one of them played in red and then the other team is pittsburgh to like you know for that 2013 summer that like that's why i'm a fan of pittsburgh sports and trust me if if pittsburgh had an nba team i'd, I'd drop the nets for them tomorrow or i, I even like you know the river hand shout out to the river hands oh, yeah. probably- so yeah, I've always like it, p- people have been dumbfounded by it. Like people don't get it. It's like a lot of people they support you know, like the New York Yankees or the Boston Celtics or you know the famous teams that I recognize the Western culture. But uh, for me, I've I've always been a, a Pittsburgh fan for like my whole 
teenage years. I think, um, and I'm I'm proud to be. It's 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 an honour to to you know share a uh, love for these teams just like you guys do, and obviously in, in Pittsburgh and around America. Yeah, and you mentioned the uh, like the big teams like the Celtics, Yankees, Lakers, mm-hmm. like those are the teams that are like I feel like a lot of people associate them with like just normal pop culture Mm -hmm. you know yeah but like people forget like pittsburgh's a pop a part of that pop culture too like snoop dogg wore the the pens jersey in in his music videos like he's a pens fan he's a steelers fan you got people that wear the pirates hats you know i mean obviously Wiz khalifa's from pittsburgh he's gonna wear a pirate's hat but like i'm i live here in new jersey and you see people wearing pirates hats and you're like I like you're I can tell you're not from Pittsburgh. Like you're you're born and raised in New Jersey. You're wearing pirates hat. That's weird. That's that's strange, but I yeah. like it. You know, I actually yeah. I had somebody come up to me in a uh grocery store because I was wearing a pirate's hat. And he goes, Are you really a fan? And I go, <laughs> Born and raised. And he's go, he goes, I just had to make sure. And then we had a whole conversation about the pirates. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's a thing where it's if like it's Pittsburgh's such a small city, and it's like you always find somebody, you know, oh, here and there. One, 100%. It's not a massive, it's not like a massive community where I can go to my next door neighbor neighbor and be like, oh hey, let's watch the pirate game. Like, no, it's like we're spread out. We we yeah. cover a lot of ground, you know. And it's whenever yeah. you meet somebody else with that same passion, it's a special thing. Yeah, I mean, every time I've been in America, particularly, like I've been to like Orlando a couple of times, um, and like every time I've been in Orlando and I wear my jerseys or the caps, like I'll always be approached. Like if I'm in a theme park or like just in the hotel, like I've been approached by so many like you know people from Pittsburgh who recognize the jerseys, and then they're usually quite surprised actually that I'm not. You know, I'm not right. from Pittsburgh, but I'm I'm a fan. I can talk about like any of the teams, and um, I remember being on a cruise in 2015. Um, it was, I think it was around like the Caribbean or something. And um, it was the first Steelers game of the uh, of the season against the Patriots, I think it was against them. I just remember walking down to the bar and there's just like this huge family, like 20 different people, all with the terrible towels, all with the jerseys, like Big Ben jerseys and stuff. And I was, I was like, I want to be with these guys. I'm going to approach them. I'm going to watch the game with them. Like it, it was, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, you definitely see... Um, pirates all around it's it's a it's an it's an iconic um it's an iconic logo and stuff like that um i've never met many local pirates fans i don't know anyone from liverpool that that supports the pirates but the um certainly the steelers are pretty popular in 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 liverpool like i think the the guy that runs one of the accounts i follow at the uk steelers and i think he's based in liverpool so that's the steelers nfl is probably the the most uh, maybe NBA and NFL or NBA are probably the most popular uh, sports um, in England in terms of North American sports. Um, and then I'd probably say MLB's third and then NHL's fourth. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you see like Steelers, Pirates, and Penguins stuff all the time. Yeah, we're everywhere, I'd say. Wow, that's awesome. So mm-hmm. earlier you mentioned like you don't wear red because that's. <laughs> I yeah. forget what team you said, but you know that. Yeah, it's like blasphemy. Yeah, yeah. I just want, like, from your experience, fans of like English football to mm-hmm. like American sports. What are the comparisons and the differences? Because, like me, like I have, like I don't have only Steelers like Pirates jerseys, like I have a Yankees jersey, I have a Jets jersey, I have, Mm -hmm. you know, I have all these things. But for someone like you, who's a fan of English football, like if that comes into your house, a a rival team's thing, (laughs) like your parents are burning it. So like, just talk to me about that compare and contrast. Yeah, I mean, it it is massively different, to be honest. In terms of like, in terms of English football teams, like I would never wear the jersey of, of a different English football team. I do own like a, a Real Madrid jersey, um, and I do like Real Madrid who are based in Spain. Um, but mm-hmm. like in general, it, it it is very different to be honest with you. Like I I do laugh about it because in England, like um, 
in the stadiums it's it's sectioned off so like the away team will sit together and the home team will sit together and obviously in, in north america it's different so if you go to pnc park you could be surrounded by the cardinals fans or wh- whatever team you're playing on the day and um, and if there's in england if there's ever like a rival fan that's sitting in like the home section there's there's trouble man it's 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 no it's no big joke so i, I would say yeah i i'd say, i don't want to use the word violent because i don't want to make britain out to be like but in terms of sport yeah it, it is it's extremely it's extremely passionate it's very tribal i'd say um and i'd, I'd say north american sports are just as tribal but i feel like you guys get along better like i feel like it, it's, I mean, rival fans in England don't even drink together. Like they wouldn't have a beer together before the game. It's like super. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on what team you're playing. You know. Okay. Well, there's, there's, there's some teams that like you just don't. Yeah, that's you did. Yeah, yeah. Because like crazy. I have friends, like as a Steeler fan, I have friends that are Ravens fans, mm-hmm. and like I have them over my apartment. We go <laughs> watch the game at a bar. Yeah. Like I mean. The Steelers usually win, so it's good for me. But yeah, like that's so like wild to me. That I, I mean, in in terms of friends, like of course, like a lot of my friends support okay. rival teams. Like, have, and of course, I'm friends with them. I, I I mean, it's much more in like the neutral sense. Like, if it's two strangers, okay. like if there's two strangers and like one of them's got like a rival jersey on, like you know, it, it, people people shout at each other. But I, I did hear that. My, my brother went to New York a few years ago and he went to a Yankees game um, and he, he bought like, you know, the Yankees jersey, the cap. He, he wanted to look the real deal when he went to Yankee Stadium. And um, he had like, you know, Boston fans like shouting at him. They were like cussing him out and stuff like that's, that. So it, that's it's, one of the few, there there are a few rivalries in the US that are similar to yeah. English rivalries. And that's one of them. Like, yeah. I, me and my buddies were talking about going to see Yankees Red Sox in mm-hmm. Boston or in this summer. And I just don't know what to expect because you hear those stories of like people just getting into it because, yeah. you know, not even because somebody looked at them funny. It's because, oh, you're wearing a Yankees hat. I'm going to beat your ass. Like, you yeah. know. <laughs> Yeah, like these Boston guys are just like cussing out my brother who like he doesn't even know like the rules of baseball. He's just going to a Yankees game to like get the experience, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm definitely like um, I think with baseball it's, it is different. I think you 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 grow to be appreciative of other teams and other players just because you spend so much time with them. Like you know, especially you not so much the divisional rivals. Like I'm I. I'm so like I've still got the English mentality. Like the Cubs and the Cardinals played in London last year, and like mm-hmm. I I didn't go because I'm like I, I don't like the Cubs and I don't like. Why the would you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be surrounded by those guys. So I think that's where other people were like, why would you not go to see? You love baseball. Why would you not go? And I was a bit jealous. Um, so I do need to go to obviously one of the London games. Um, which is the Phillies and Mets next year. So I'm, I'm going to go to that one. It's a good game. Yeah, yeah, I, I can sit with Phillies fans and Mets fans, it's fine with me. Um, but yeah, I think like in baseball, it's different. Like, you do grow to appreciate certain pitches and certain batters. You're just like, these guys are awesome because you watch them for like sometimes like four games in a week, and that's like the equivalent of like half a day. So, if you're seeing a guy hit home run after home run, like it's, it's difficult to not kind of you know appreciate what they do or if the pitch on lights out. So, um, I think baseball's, I, I don't know, I mean. I've, I don't know if people fight at baseball games. I can't imagine so, but it's definitely not as as rough and, and ready as as you know as Premier League football, I'd say. Um, and I mean, in in Scotland, there's like some teams that literally can't even two team fans can't even be in the same stadium. Like it's it's like it's it's so bad. So um, yeah, Britain's a Britain's Britain seems angry when I'm describing it. It's not as angry as people think, but I think no, it's, it's just. It's passion, like it's it's yeah. passion to the extremist extent. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. my so like listening to you talk about it, like it just reminds me of like how Americans are with like college football, specifically the South. Yeah, like the South. There's not many pro teams in the South, so they they all support their local college team. It's like the Alabamas, yeah. the Auburns, like all the SEC teams, like. 
that is what's comparative, I think, to English football. Is like those fans, they like it's their whole life. They bleed it. They, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're part of a booster program. They have a tailgate. They they never missed a game. They, you know, all this stuff. And it's like Alabama, Auburn. Yeah, they're in the same state. And like, if an Auburn fan was to go to an Alabama tailgate, that guy's getting jumped. Like, yeah, it, it's yeah, no joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. I I find it crazy. I mean, it, this is something I need to like pitch to you i i cannot believe that like college teams get like crowds of 120 like we just don't have anything like that in 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 great britain like we don't have like college teams like it's always professional like we don't have a draft and stuff but i just find it fascinating that you know you see like you say about like alabama and stuff like they have like enormous stadiums like 100k plus stadiums it's it's amazing and that's the thing is the pro teams in the u.s don't even have stadiums that big yeah yeah like it's I, college I, yeah i saw the uh the johnny manziel documentary on netflix and like the guy was like the the most sold jersey in like you know north america it was like more than than lebron james and like tom brady and stuff it was not that um, it was all legal but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, uh, do they did they get paid no or like now yeah yeah. so college players now they get paid they have to have like a deal or whatever it's the name image likeness thing um it's very very new so like they can i think they're trying to pass something where they can get paid specifically by the school yeah which will be odd but it's something that's being talked about but right now it's like all brand deals so like you'll have people there's a guy oh there's a guy, I think he played for Alabama, but his name, he had like a funny name. Mm-hmm. And he had like a a deal with an air conditioning, like these people that installed air conditioning. Yeah. And like it was funny because it went with his name and it's like, oh, haha. But he made so much money off doing those commercials. And it's like, yeah, it it's just insane now. And I mean, I think it's deserved because, you know, football, college football in the United States makes so much money. Yeah. And for that money not to go back to the players, I mean, it goes back to the schools and everything, yeah. But, like, for these players to just be treated as, like, I don't know if you want to call them slaves. I think that's the wrong word, Mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. But they're just, like, put out there. It's like, all right, go make us money. And it's like, oh, you're – and they just get an education. It's like, yeah, the education's useful. But whenever you see, like, your boosters or whatever – like your your school is making millions upon millions of dollars because of you, and you have guys on your team that are walk ons that don't have scholarships. Yeah, it's like why can't you like you got a lot of money? Why can't you pay for that guy's school? He's on the team, and it's like it's just a whole thing. Yeah, I mean it's crazy that they have like the same pressures of like you know the high level athletes as well with like these huge stadiums. And I mean I, I've never really been into college sports. It's just not something I've I've ever really gone down the rabbit hole yet um but yeah. like you know on a saturday well, if you do like, don't start with pittsburgh n- <laughs> yeah I've, I've been told that before some people have tried to to convince me to like uh, support west virginia or penn state people tell me to support pitt i i, I yeah. don't know I, i've heard pitt football is pretty bad though a lot of people yeah. tweet about that yeah <laughs> so I, I i i don't know maybe i should support them because every other team is sports pretty bad so during the during the pit the uh, i don't know but um yeah like on, on a saturday like you see twitter's blown up everyone watches college football it's crazy yeah and and i mean even in the uk like some of these college athletes like um like livy dunn and stuff like people talk about them every single day like paul skeens like they're, they're like you know yeah. celebrities man it, it, I, I just find it bizarre um, i don't know like, if you saw recently but um leaf trading cards mm-hmm. they recently started selling signed livy dunn leotards oh my god which they were only selling them for 130 dollars, and i think leaf just like they could have made a lot more money that's all i'm saying yeah. <laughs> you know and i mean yeah. but that's the thing is these these college athletes are signing these deals now where they can sell their autographs they can do all this stuff Meanwhile, back in like the early two or late two thousands, you had guy. Oh, what was his name? Terrell Pryor 
for Ohio mm-hmm. State. You know, he ended up going to the NFL, didn't really pan out as well as he thought he would. But when he was in college, he had, I don't know if it was his national championship ripped away or something, but like they disqualified their season because him and a bunch of other guys were like, we want to get tattoos, but we don't have money. We're poor college students. So we're going to give the tattoo artist like autographs. No way. And they, that's how they paid for their tattoos and stuff. It was just like, hey, I don't have money. I'm a college student. And the, the dude's just like, just give me your autograph. Yeah. Like as something as simple as your signature on a piece of paper. And, and these guys the got reprimanded. Yeah. I, I don't know if they lost. Yeah. I don't know if they lost their championship or anything. They There was something that they got taken away from them or is like discredited. I think it's just their season. And mm-hmm. I don't think that they went to like the national championship, but they went to a bowl game or something, which is another thing about college football that I think is kind of ridiculous is we have bowl games. Yeah, I don't There's understand so the many bowl, bowl systems. Yeah. The bowls are just like ways for corporate America to make money. <laughs> it's all it is. Because they yeah. sponsor these games and they're like, all right, well, we'll p- just pick a, a team from that conference and a team from that conference make them play and the whole game is just an advertisement for our product that's all yeah, it is it, it's not like the best two teams in the balls i think that's what i've gathered is like they just like random right i, I mean now any, they have the playoff you know. now they have the playoff which is good i like the playoff but something actually that i talked about one of my co-workers with is that just do like some sort of march madness tournament tournament yeah with football i mean yeah it's a lot more games like it's, it would be tough to do but with all these bowl games, you can make them matter more if you just have each bowl game as a round of the playoffs. Yeah. You know, instead of just like, all right, well, we're going to take this six and six team, play this six and six team, and we're going to sell you bad boy mowers. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want that. Yeah. I don't want that, but it's what we have. Oh, um, man. I, the, the, uh, the college sport, I, I just, I, as I said, I just can't believe, like, it's, it's insane. Yeah, oh, I don't is. even. I don't even know if I should recommend you getting into it because it's so insane. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm gonna stick. I've got a. I've got a lot of me play. You know, with with these teams, man. I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole as well. Right. But I, I, I will take recommendations, though. I mean, I know people are trying to convince me to to support different teams for sure. Um. So. I may do a LeBron James and like I'll have a bunch of hats on the table and like <laughs> select one. I don't know. Yeah, I might start next season. We're also quite deep into the season though, too, aren't we? So yeah, I don't wanna, like, well, the season. Get... Yeah, they're like in bowl season now, so the bowl yeah, games just yeah. started. So I'm gonna like yeah, for me, like for me, like I just love watching football. So I don't really support a specific college team. Mm-hmm. I just like I support storylines when it comes to college yeah. sports, like. I supported the storyline of like Deion Sanders coach in Colorado. I was like, oh, this is awesome. He brought in all his own players. Like they were doing the thing. They were doing the thing and then they just got awful. And it was like, yeah. ah, okay, I'm not going to watch them anymore. What's the next thing? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> so that's how I am with college sports. And I mean, with sports betting yeah. and everything, it makes it fun. So. Yeah, I'm di- I'm different to that. <laughs> it's weird because like you know I, I I watch like as many Pirates games as I can. So like generally to to kind of give an insight to most games start around midnight. I think there's two early right. games a week, um, which you know I can just watch like they start at like six p.m. and then um, so there's a few midnight games uh, a week and I generally like if they start around midnight, I'll 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 say to myself I'll watch the first hour. And then you know I'll go to sleep. It never, never ever works out that way because it, you know I'm watching the game. I'm excited, um, but yeah, it's it, so I, I commit like a lot of time to watching the Pirates. I, I watch all like the podcasts. I'm, I'm like I watch all the NS nines. I know everything about all the stats. Like you know the bad. I've pretty much learned it all through NS nine. By the way, I've learned so much. That's how I'm working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know we said um, before we started. I was the same as you. But when it comes to like if the pirates aren't playing or like once the playoff season comes around, I would just like I switch off. Like I, I don't watch like the playoffs or I, it just doesn't have the same impact for me. And I'm the same with, with NFL. Like I watch the Steelers, but I wouldn't tune into like different teams unless it, I, I do watch the Super Bowl. Right. So I, I find it fascinating, really, that like you know you you, you love watching like all football, but I, I like watching like my teams. I'm so like 
it's it, I'm weird like that. Like I'll only watch. Yeah. I've got like a tunnel vision, if you know what I mean. In, in terms, yeah, of, like, yeah, yeah. It's like I can be super invested in Pirates baseball, but if, if it's any other team, I'm like, no. I, I'm right. not, I haven't got but this that's something there. about baseball that like I relate to that. Like mm-hmm. once the playoffs come around, I'll maybe watch a wild card game here and there. Yeah. And then I'm not watching until like it's an elimination game of the World Series. I think yeah. that's just a problem in marketing for for Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. But... Possibly, yeah. I know what you mean in terms of like this I think there is storylines with other sports that maybe baseball doesn't have. Like you don't really have those right. besides the the Yankees and the Red Sox that we mentioned, there's not really any of those rivalries. There's little things that happen sometimes, but like institutional rivalries, um, where it's like we call them derbies in, in, in English football, where like if mm-hmm. you know two teams from the same city play, it's like a big event. And like for like the whole week running up to it, I, like everyone's talking about it and stuff, and like you've got to tune in. Um, but yeah, baseball, it doesn't really have that. I don't know. I, I I do want to watch some playoff baseball, but I'm not sure whether we're going to see any Pirates playoff baseball right. anytime soon, unfortunately. So I hope we, we're in for a surprise next season. But the way it's looking at the moment, it's... Uh, Rough. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not been a fun off-season so far. Yeah. But speaking of, like, the marketing of Major League Baseball, like, what is, like, what's the landscape of Major League Baseball look like in England? Like how, like you, you mentioned there's fans of other teams around, like, yeah. How, how has the game expanded to that, that front? Like, what is it like out there? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'd say it's definitely expanding Um, obviously getting the, the MLB London series, like I mentioned before, um, that's been huge. I'd say for the growth of the game. Um, cause that's like, you know, over a hundred thousand fans over two days. Um, in the Olympic Stadium in London. Um, and what's come with the MLB series, uh, the London series, is you know a partnership with the BBC. So like a lot of games now in MLB are being, you know, broadcast bro- broadcast, oh my god, I can't say that, onto like <laughs> national TV, um, you know, for people to enjoy. Um and I'd say a, a big factor was also the World Baseball Classic, like Great Britain actually won a game. Like it was, <laughs> it was surprising. I, I know, like that was a big moment for me because I like I never expected Great Britain to be able to win a game. I know ninety nine percent of the players have never probably even been to Britain. Maybe they just right. got like a, a grandparent that lived there or something. But um, it was still a big moment and it meant a lot to a lot of the local fans. Um, Listen, they did they did Great Britain dirty with those jerseys though. Yeah, I wasn't. I did wasn't, not deserve those jerseys. No, I I wouldn't <laughs> wear one. To be honest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't wear one. But um, yeah. I, I mean, in terms of the landscape, like um, you, you know, I I definitely think it's growing. I think what's helped as well is is the rule changes, especially for me. The the pitch clock is 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 it like I I don't know what people think about the pitch clock. I absolutely love it. It's so helpful. I mean, it was getting extremely difficult to when you're staying up late and like right. a pitch will come in and you know the pitcher will grab the rosin bag and he'll do his thing the, the batter step out you know take his gloves off and like replace them and it's like you know maybe sometimes like two minutes in between a pitch and then they'll take a time out and I, I'm, I'm trying to watch this at like you know, two in the morning and <laughs> it's difficult yeah. but now like you kind of get an adrenaline rush with the new rules because like you can't really take your eyes off it like if you leave, you know, if you leave the room for a minute and like, you know, go to the toilet, like you can miss like, you know, two, two, three outs. It's it's so quick, um, and I think that's that's gonna definitely help with the expansion, um, you know, globally. I think it's a more entertaining product. I think sometimes with baseball, I think there's the perception that it's it's a, a long-winded, boring sport, maybe just because of the pace that it's played, um, right. I, I don't think it is. And, I, and it's funny that, you know, our country loves cricket, which is a much slower game. They have to play over yeah. five days, not three hours. So we can, you know, my dad can sit and watch five straight days of cricket, but he can't watch, you know, an hour of baseball, which I find funny. Right. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, and I've, I've played, um, I've played a little with the, um, we've got a local baseball team in Liverpool. So I went to a, a few training sessions and stuff. I, I couldn't play the season, unfortunately. 
uh, for a few different reasons. Um, but it was great. I mean, everyone there, like they had experiences. They had their own teams. There was Brewers fans, Dodgers fans, Red Sox. Everyone had like their own cap and, you know, people were staying up. And a lot of them were like, you know, traveling the world. Like a few guys went to the World Baseball Classic. Other guys have been to Milwaukee to travel out. Um, I haven't been able to go to an MLB game yet, but it's like, you know, it's a dream of mine and a plan. But, um, you know, there's people that are really passionate about the sport in, in the UK and, and, you know, around Europe. It's growing and you can find them for every team. And I think it's, it's for me, what's been amazing as well is just the reaction for, for people, you know, who are Pirates fans over the years. Like, you know, the way that they've treated me online. Um, you know, I've I've had so people have been so nice to me. I've been sent jerseys, bobbleheads, you know, AJ Bennett bobbleheads, Ben Roethlisberger jerseys, um, signed Mark Andre Flory caps, like you know, his signature, and and um, even like you know, boxes of like American like candies and sweets that we couldn't get in the UK. Like, nice. um, <laughs> I got sent like Reese's peanut butter cups. I'd never never seen them before. I was like, oh my god, these are the best. We we've got them now. I, I eat them all the time. Okay. <laughs> but um you know like terrible towels and even people like there was a guy and um he had like a, a cable box in in pittsburgh and it was in like it was in his office or something he never used it so but you could use it online so he like gave me the login and basically gave me access to like you know every single pirates and steelers and penguins game on root sports for free and like hd wow. just little things like that like you know like the way the way and and just the, the way people have always been online and like these the friendships and stuff I've built online like it's 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 so cool the way people have, have treated me over the years man it's it's amazing even even to be you know on, on a on a pirates podcast is, is is it's an honor so um yeah I, I definitely say the game's growing and it's helped by you know the people in North America who are, who are just so nice like it's it's awesome like people are always trying to like help me and educate me on the Pittsburgh culture so I, I feel like even though I've never been to Pittsburgh, I, I do feel a real connection to it. And, you know, I I, I sit and want to eat Promantis and I'm like, you know, I, I, I know things about I want to drink Icy Light. I'm jealous. I've never tried it. <laughs> I know that um, Icy Light Mango is like the one everyone loves as well. That's the one. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, it's these little things that you learn on that, man. It's, it's cool that I even know oh, what Icy man. Light Mango is. It's It's funny. We we got to get you to Pittsburgh. Icy Light Mango. That's like even me. Like so, I'm not able to get Icy Light here in New Jersey. Like it's a, yeah. it's a regional thing. Yeah. And I always when I'm home, I'll go and get like a thirty rack of <laughs> Icy Lights. And like I, I don't know if they changed it now because I haven't been there in a while. But I think Icy Light Mango is like a a, a seasonal thing. So oh, you only yeah. get it in the summertime. I might be wrong about that, but it used to be. I know that. When it first came out, and like you know these these winter months, not having icy light mango, I'm like, oh, I need that I, sweet nectar, man. <laughs> it's like the most people are so passionate about icy light mango. I have I see people tweet about it every single day, man. Like it, it's I don't know what it is. It because it doesn't sound good. Like I've got to say, like it, it does not sound like a mango flavored beer. It does not sound good, dude. But, uh, I know a lot of people like even so my girlfriend's dad like he's he's a New Jersey guy mm-hmm. I told him about it I was like oh this is I see like mango like I, I had it and I was like this is awesome like, you got to try yeah. it he's like you're drinking fruit flavored beer <laughs> and I'm like yeah I'm like it's great and like even my dad who is from Pittsburgh he's like I'm not drinking no fruit flavored beer no and then they both had icy light mango and they're like this is amazing <laughs> yeah. Like, we yeah, my, to, like, yeah we need to get you a new to, sponsor for booking around by icy light i think that's dude we need, look, we, we need know, it. <laughs> it it has to happen i think it there's, there's a synergy there it's such a good fit booking around i know i mean me and chris light. me and chris on the last episode i i just had him appearing out of nowhere i didn't know yeah. they were coming <laughs> and then he yeah. was ready like we really need icy light to sponsor icy light if you're listening sponsor <laughs> <laughs> and and bring but, the beer to england as well and i can try it exactly it's, it's, we gotta, gotta get them. it over to england yeah for sure but um, Man, but we we gotta get you to pittsburgh 
Yeah, it's 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 one of those things, man. I mean, like uh, I, I think I said before, like people's dream destinations. When you ask people, like, where do you want to visit? Like most people say, I want to go to Los Angeles. I want to go to Melbourne or Sydney. I want to go to Dubai. Man's always been Pittsburgh, um, and I've heard of people that have been there have said it's amazing. Like, uh, like they say, it's such a lovely place. They're really friendly and. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I've dreamed to go. It's it's really expensive, obviously, to uh, to get over there. It's going to cost me. I'm going to have to save. I've I've been saving, but it's it's going to take some time. It's a big commitment um, to go over. But you know, trust me, when I'm there, like I'm gonna, I, I want to see like two full series in PNC. I want to go to every right. possible, you know, like Promanti Brothers and and you know, drink as many icy lights as I can and and. Um, just do everything I can there because it, it is a dream um, and I will be there one day for sure and um, hopefully you know like I can get to meet some players maybe get some balls on maybe right, I, I right. mean I, I'm so passionate about it I, I dream to like even the chance to meet like Greg Brown would just be crazy for me like you grow up with oh I'd love to meet Greg Brown too but the other yeah, two guys yeah. got to meet him and didn't tell me at the winter <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I had yeah. to go I had to go do something for work. Meanwhile, they're talking to Greg Brown and Matt Caps, and I'm like, yeah, "Yeah, I wanted to meet Greg Brown and Matt Caps." <laughs> yeah, th- those guys are heroes. Honestly, I I love that. I'm I'm sad about Robbie though. I'm really sad about Ro- justice for Robbie. I'm gonna say it on the yeah, justice for yeah. Robbie. We gotta we gotta start that hashtag during the season. Yeah, I mean, he, he's gonna be missed. losing. Robbie stinks. Yeah, yeah, I love that clip when um, they asked David Bednar to sign. You to get Robbie to sign the ball. Oh, when I did that, uh, yeah, I got the yeah, baseball yeah. right here. It's that's the ball, what, man. That's <laughs> one of the funniest clips I've seen. Like Bednar's reaction. Oh, that's so cool, man. <laughs> Bednar's reaction is like it's. Oh, oh, that's, that's so funny. That's an all-time NS9 moment. Let's yeah, be yeah. That's one of <laughs> me, that's definitely one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. Like we're not going to get a moment like that again. I need to get Robbie on this show. I Chris, think it's, Chris it's was, possible now. It, Chris was telling possible. me he'd get he'd get me Robbie, and then like I texted him about it again, and he was like, "Haha," and I'm like, "Chris, I know you have his number." Yeah, get me Robbie. <laughs> yeah, That's, I don't know if Robbie'd yeah. want to come on because you know you you watched the vlog, right? So you saw the Robbie yeah. counter. Yeah, there were yeah, many yeah. more. Hey, Robbie's and what was on the Robbie? Counter. It was it was a bit of a I don't want to use the word harassment, but it was you know. <laughs> Like it yeah. was all in good fun. You seem all like uh, well, you you fans of the guy, you know. You get starstruck sometimes. You got like all star pitches there, but there's only one Robbie in Spakowski. But exactly. um, yeah, again, though, I mean Robbie for me as a, as a Pirates fan, like he's been there the entire. I think it was Dan Potash actually when I first started watching him. Like, Probably, yeah. But Robbie's been there the majority of the time. He's he's a yeah. legend. It's a shame. I, I hope that they don't make any other changes to you know the. To the commentary and stuff as well yeah we'll bit, see yeah. man i don't know i mean we've been talking to fort about it i think fort is coming back um, yeah fort has got to come back. he knows way more than us he's he's actually involved with that stuff so we're gonna keep tabs on that but hopefully like you said they don't change anything like fort says it all the time like there's a synergy there it's a family like they know they put a good product together and they know that the city of pittsburgh appreciates them so I yeah. really hope they don't change much. Yeah, it's it's fun. The coverage is fantastic. I mean, uh, for me, like, I, I, obviously, every every game I watch is with those guys. Uh, a lot of people are fortunate enough to be able to go to the stadium. Like Chris, for example, like he's there on TV pretty much every day. Right. Um, those guys are so cool. I, I love like seeing them with the flags. By the way, that that always brings a smile to my face. Um, but yeah, like. I, I've grown up with those guys. I feel like I know them. Do you know what I mean? Even though, like, right? You, yeah, you just have this, and I love like you get this like awkward energy with them. Sometimes it's just perfect. For, <laughs> it's it's so pirates. Like that's the only way I could describe it. There's so many things about the pirates. Like you just like this is like do other teams like love guys like Robbie, and it's just like it's there's little things of being a pirate. It's another thing is so unique, and the, the little things make us really happy. Um. So it, it's cool, man. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I hope you can get Robbie on the show. I think that'd be a great episode. I think he's got a lot of stories to tell. 
That's got to be yeah, their, I mean, he, their number one. Friend. He just did. He just did his first stand up comedy set. Uh, he opened up for Matt Light. I don't know if you follow Matt Light on Twitter. And no, I, I don't. I'll, I'll have to. He's a he's a Pittsburgh here. comedian. He's the big icy light guy. Like his his face is on an icy light can right now. That's a dream, man. Like yeah, the, yeah he's yeah. living the Pittsburgh dream. So yeah. like I I recommend following him. He's a pretty funny guy. But mm-hmm. he Robbie opened up for him at Stage A E in Pittsburgh on the North Shore. That's and so cool. Robbie had never I get from what I've been told Robbie never did stand up before. So I wish I could have gone but I'm sure it was hilarious. But yeah, he's just a Pittsburgh icon. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea he did stand up actually. But he doesn't. Just, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if he outgrown the Pirates now if he became like the next big like Joe Rogan or something like that. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then like they're trying to get him back. They want him back for like He's like, Robbie, Robbie, you've gotten really big. You need to come back to the small Pittsburgh market. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, um, <laughs> I don't he, know about he, that. He grows to be out of Bob Nutton's payroll. He's like too expensive. No. Yeah. That would be cool. I'm rooting for Oh, that'd be sure. awesome. Yeah. Well, all right. Before we get out of here, I told you ahead of time, we're going to play a little game. We do it at the end of every show. Yeah. Chris's show kind of sucked because I didn't, I didn't prepare. I was just like, let's just find a pirate like trivia thing and we'll do it and it sucked yeah but this one i put more than 10 minutes of time into i put about 15 minutes of time into nice (laughs) so we're gonna do a little this or that with american classics and english staples when it comes to food cool man so i mean i i feel like what what first off what's your favorite food oh what do you love my favorite food that's a great question um i don't know like probably like a burrito or something i, I it's, it's hard to it's say too I American. Like a lot of, what are you doing yeah, well it's me- mexican <laughs> technically do you mean my favorite british food sure it, yeah what's your it, favorite I mean, british food? again it's it's to give you an insight british food is like just a mixture of every other like the the most popular dish in um in england is chicken tikka masala which is curry which is like an indian yeah it's so, like indian yeah, yeah, so like we've just got a mixture of everything, but um yeah, you know what? I'll say curry, that's probably my favorite actually. That's lovely. Oh nice. I, yeah. I've had I've had some curry, probably not good curry, but I've had curry. <laughs> and yeah. It's not bad. I, I don't think my mom is good curry, but probably like well, I don't know. It's hard <laughs> on the yeah, it can be hard on the stomach sometimes, but well anyway, I got these so the English staples that I have on this are from the internet. So Blame the internet if they're wrong or yeah. if they offend you. I just, I'm the messenger here. I didn't write this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wrote the presentation, but, <laughs> but anyway, let's go on to our first one. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to debate. Okay. So, what, tell me what you want to do. Do you want to defend your country or yeah. should we split flop and make it like weird? No, I, I'll defend, yeah, because I feel like I, I don't know if you'll even know what some of these dishes are. I hope you, yeah. I don't, I'll, 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 I'll fly the flag for Britain for sure. Okay, we'll do that then. So, yeah, yeah. round one. Oh, I did not know that was there. That was a great it, transition. This is a great, <laughs> this is a fantastic debate. This is like the perfect one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we have the full English breakfast versus a full American breakfast. You're the guest, so I'll let you go first. Go ahead, defend. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna defend. I'm gonna attack. So like I I cannot believe that you guys put like maple syrup and stuff over like meats and like that is absolutely <laughs> revolting. That is like makes me feel sick. Like the first time I was in Denny's once in Orlando and I saw people like pouring syrup over eggs. I'm like that's crazy. But yeah, the full English breakfast. I'd say it's like it is a staple. It's it's something you don't eat it every day. I feel like the full English is perfect for like a Sunday morning, maybe a hungover. It's something that you lie in your stomach with, you know, a hangover cure, I'd say. It. And it's, you know, everything's everything on this, you know, savory. There's no sweetness. There's no pancakes. You know, pancakes are a dessert, <laughs> in my opinion. Pancakes shouldn't be mixed with bacon and eggs. So uh, the full English, you know, you've got all your meats on there, some uh, beans, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I much prefer the full English. Yeah, I'll die on the hill. All right. So I, I mean, I just think you're completely wrong with <laughs> not putting maple syrup on meat because, like, 
a sw- the sweet and savory, like the fatty with the sugar. It's such it's so American. It it should be illegal. It is very like, American. Yeah. <laughs> like I not that I do it all the time. Like I don't always put maple syrup on my bacon, but yeah. If I can get some candied bacon, the candied bacon with brown sugar on it, oh buddy. Oh my that's that sounds, the way to go. That sounds that sounds awful. No, I need to that's try the best. That. It's the yeah, best. Yeah. But then you know we have we have our, our hash browns or those are home fries it's pictured. The, yeah. the two different styles, you know. I prefer hash browns because I like yeah. the you know the grated potato, get a little crisp on there, like it's a little little patty almost. Yeah, and then you got the eggs. You got your eggs. I mean, I don't like sunny side up. I like scrambled. That's the other thing. Yeah, I, yeah. So many varieties of eggs. Mm-hmm. I think you can go with any variety here, and it's going to work. Yeah. And then you got the pancakes. The pancakes are what make you feel stuffed. Like, like you said, <laughs> the inner lining. Yeah. The inner lining. You know, and if you have a full American breakfast, you don't have to eat until dinner time. Like you're good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm all in. All in on a full American breakfast. Yeah, I think I'm, we'll definitely have to agree to disagree on that one, Cody. I, <laughs> we'll have to have yeah. we'll have to have the fans vote on who wins this debate. So that's round one. It's gonna we be difficult. Five rounds. It's it's gonna be a. I feel like we're gonna bias fan base. Although we did have some Europeans on um, Starbucks today. Hey, number two, so. number two podcast in Belgium. So yeah, yeah. So on, <laughs> I hope the Belgians are uh, you know listening in and. I'm gonna support me for sure. All right. Well, that's round one. We'll get the results later. We'll we'll tweet about it. Whatever. But let's go to <laughs> yeah. round two. Whoa! Another great transition. I didn't know was gonna happen. <laughs> oh. We have cream tea versus a bagel with cream cheese. I don't. I'm not even sure what cream tea is, but yeah. I will yeah. say it does look delicious. So go ahead. Uh, cream tea is delicious. Um, you know, we call them scones. Um, so it's like, uh, it's like a, ah, oh, how can I describe it? It's like a sweet biscuit. What do you guys call it? Yeah. 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 It's like a well, sweet We have scones. Biscuit. Yeah. We would call it Yeah. Scones. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. And um, with like, you know, cream <laughs> and, and jelly or jam, as we call it in the middle. Um, they are delicious, although I'm going to be controversial and say, I think a bagel with cream cheese is the superior. Whoa, 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 that's not what we're supposed to do here. Oh. You got to <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know, I'm such... No, well, I this, mean, one, this one's one. I won round two. <laughs> <laughs> it's, difficult. it's difficult. I mean, scones are like something you have maybe like... You know, well, certainly in Liverpool, which is like, you know, it's more of a, a blue-collar city, I'd say. Yeah, we, we, we're not eating scones every day. Maybe in London <laughs> and stuff, but yeah. Um, I'm not sitting down to have like uh, cream tea or scones every single day. To be honest, I'm more of a bagel guy for sure. Um, but they are very well, nice, and if you get the chance to eat them, I would recommend them. Well, you just made my job really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I, you're from New York. Well, you're living around New York, so I, still I li- want yeah, I live yeah. in New Jersey. I have, I have discovered why bagels are the most superior thing. <laughs> to eat in the morning there are so many varieties there's yeah. so many things you can do with it you don't even have to put cream cheese on it you could put a whole sandwich on there you can do so many things with a bagel just like the the crust on the outside with the softness on the inside a bagel is superior to any breakfast like wheat based <laughs> food yeah. i just bagels are just so good man they are like, the best yeah. Oh my God. We so what we like to get sometimes is we'll do a bagel sandwich. It'll have, uh, I'll just say ham instead of we call it pork roll or Taylor ham in New Jersey. Yeah. But it's it's basically just a piece of ham, almost processed pork <laughs> <laughs> with eggs, American cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Wow. And then you put a hash brown on there. Oh, that sounds oh, phenomenal. Oh, buddy. That sounds That's phenomenal. That's the stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's that the sounds stuff. Amazing. But yeah, bagels, bagels the way to go. And I'm glad yeah. that you just like I, deferred I'm, I'm to me. Struggling, I'm struggling to disagree. <laughs> I am struggling to disagree. Uh, well, let's go to round three now. We got 
Fish and chips oh. versus a cheeseburger and fries. Oh. You told me before the show that you just had some fish and chips. Yeah, so. I've, I've just had fish and chips, so I've definitely <laughs> got it in me. to defend. Fish and chips is an absolute staple of, of British food, um, and I'm, I'm sure you can get it in, in America too. Um, you know, it, it rains a lot in in um, it rains a lot in England. It's cold all the time. We don't get this, you know, the summer like what you guys get. It's our summers are, are, are cold too. It's damp. It's grey, and you know when it's raining, when you you see the the raindrops on the windows, it's pouring down. What you what you need, you know, what, what you need to make yourself feel better, fish and chips. It's like the grease, the salt, the vinegar. It's like you know fried fish, like. They do the chips like these really thick, like they're not like French fries. They're like, um, you know, I think you call them steak fries, maybe. Like the yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. but they're like soft and gooey as well, man. And like everything, and then you pour like uh, the tartar sauce over it, and it just it fills you like it, it just makes you happy on a, on a rainy day, I'd say. Whereas burgers, you know, burgers, yeah, everyone everyone makes cheese burgers like for. You can get a good cheeseburger anywhere in the world, but you can't get good fish and chips anywhere in the world. That's what my argument be, Cody, I'd say. That's what I'm going to say. I've Ooh. had fish and chips in America, and it was disgusting. So, I was going to say, that's a tough argument. That's a tough yeah. argument for me to, to <laughs> take down. But yeah. I would say a cheeseburger, an American staple all the way. I mean, this country was built on cheeseburgers. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. Like just the you get a nice brioche bun toast it while you're cooking the burger put the cheese on the burger let it melt take your brioche bun off put some mayo on the top there put your your lettuce tomato onion on the bottom put them in there squeeze it let it all soak up oh and then you just <laughs> devour that thing with some fries on the side yeah we call them fries screw your shit <laughs> They're, those are fries. <laughs> Get some that's fries cool. on the side. Oh, that's that's. It's hard to beat a good old fashioned cheeseburger, and you know yeah. it's, it's so easy to make yourself. There's no frying involved. You don't need to get any hot oil. You know, yeah. I could just get get a a piece of metal, heat it up real hot, throw some meat on there, smash it down, and there you go. <laughs> yeah, a burger. <laughs> there's an art to there's an art to fish and chips. You know, any, anyone can cook a burger, I suppose. But I do have I a question. Say, it was oh yeah, go ahead. In in Pittsburgh, where's the best burger? If I go to Pittsburgh, where have I got to go? Like for a burger, the best burger in Pittsburgh. I'm probably not the person to ask. But no, no. I will say it's not it's not technically a burger, but at Permani Brothers, they do. What's called the Pittsburgher. Oh, I've and seen that. Yeah. Right. It's the steak yeah. patty. It's a steak patty with the cheese and you have the fries and coleslaw and everything. But I you can't really count that. So yeah. Oh, the best burger in Pittsburgh. I think that's the thing, is burgers are so Americanized. Yeah. That, like, I know, nobody yeah. has like a specific like there's not a specific burger joint. Like you know, yeah. you, I can go to I can go to McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's, Wendy's. I can go to so many places and get a burger that like it's hard yeah. to find like a good burger. Mm -hmm. So I I, I hopefully someone point. in the comments can tell you where to get a good yeah. burger. In Pittsburgh. Yeah, that this is what this is, it's we're engagement building as well. You know, we're building Boom. engagement. We want the comments too. So. You yeah. get it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there, that's our debate on fish and chips versus fries. I will say fish and chips. You know, I'll have it. It's it's all right. Too much batter for my liking. As I as I like said, you know, it's it's you can get a good burger anywhere in the world, but fish and chips is different. You know, so <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, let's go to round four. We got. Shepherd's pie versus a pot pie. Now, I know they're not, like, very similar, but they're as similar as I could find. Like, mm -hmm. shepherd's pie has the potato on top, and a pot pie is just, like, a pie crust. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do we're gonna do the debate. We're going to do the thing. So, yeah. sir, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the shepherd's pie is, it, it's truly a British classic, I'd say. 
you don't get any more British than uh, the the shepherd's pie, you know. Um, what can I say about it? You know, you, you get the potato on top, the the nice meat on the bottom. You sometimes melt some cheese over the top as well on the, over the potato. And I mean, what I like to do is you get loads of vegetables. So you get like carrots, um, ah, like peas and stuff like that, and you just mash it all together. Pour some gravy on top. It's like. Yeah, uh, very similar to um, the if it was it the last one I said fish and chips. Like when it's rainy, when it's cold, the shepherd's pie. It's gonna fill you up. It's gonna give you some internal heat. Um, it's it's delicious. The pot pie is you know something you put in the microwave. It's like you know you, you just something you throw in the mic. It's it, it's there's a craft there's a craft to a shepherd's pie. It takes time. You know your mom or your wife or whatever. You've got to. You gotta mash the potatoes. You gotta, you know, you gotta season the the beef. You gotta spread the cheese. Pop pie it in the microwave or the oven. That's, you know, <laughs> it's nothing about that. No one. I mean, I might be wrong, but I, I think there's a lot more that goes into a shepherd's pie, unless it's a homemade pot pie, which probably would be nice too. So, this might be the one that I defer to your side. <laughs> I mean, a pot pie. I grew up eating pot pies. They're great. Like you said, throw them in the microwave. Comes yeah. out piping hot. But it's it hits the spot, man. It fills you up. You, yeah. You know, it's a it's a full meal and it's just a little thing in your in your hand. And I mean, it's just if you get the right kind, like I like a chicken pot pie. You get the chicken gravy in there, the peas, the carrots, the little bit of potatoes. I mean, the and the flakiness of the <laughs> the pie crust it all just it all comes together and it soaks up like it all soaks into each other that's the best one it's all soaked together yeah and it, you, yeah. you know the crust isn't as flaky anymore it's more of like a i'm weird i like a doughy like bread you know i like it when it's yeah. doughy when it's wet like that and just the taste of it's so good it's just so hard to defend this against a shepherd's pie though yeah, yeah, I mean, you've made I like I eat, not I that I'm going and getting the not that I'm going and getting the best shepherd's pie. Like I go down to the the Irish pub down the street, and that's where I get my shepherd's pie. Yeah, but still, they somebody back there makes it the right way. I I swear, like the it Irish, is great. <laughs> the Irish definitely do an amazing shepherd's. The best to uh, yeah. I, I, the, your description of the pot pie makes me want to eat one now, though. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like I see light or like the 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 Popeye company is like you're the man. Like th this show needs to be maybe yeah by. maybe I gotta yeah. change my brand here. I just gotta talk <laughs> about food. <you> know? <laughs> this is I mean the, the passion man. Like it seems like you know we're missing something here. Like the the food mm -hmm. section at the end of every episode. You know when Robbie comes on, you gotta tell him you know get him to talk about his favorite right thing, sure right well i i don't i think we can see where the passion lies you know? <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, me, me too for sure, man. me too <laughs> all right our final round we're going to a dessert round oh okay apple crumble versus apple pie oh no yeah I, see, i'm not a fan of apple based stuff you know oh okay, okay. I, i'm not I a huge fan first. yeah no it's fine <laughs> I, I, it's going to be difficult. I don't really like apple crumble, but with apple pie, there's the McDonald's one, which is nice. I'll eat a McDonald's <laughs> apple pie. I think, I think universally, like whatever country people are in, like the, the McDonald's apple pie is, is pretty good. Um, I have had American apple pie um, when I was there on the 4th of July one year, and it was excellent. So, again, I'm, I'm sorry, apple crumble. I've got nothing to say. It, it, it can be nice. You get some custard on there, some mixture. You know, it, it is nice, but yeah, I'm going. I'm going to say apple pie. I, I'm not a big fan of apple based, like you know, dessert. So, oh, I I should have. I knew I should have been like, hey. Like, <laughs> I'm struggling you know, I, to go to know. back for for you know. <laughs> it, it's it's difficult, man. So basically, what you're saying is American food is much better. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, in terms of the, in terms of the rounds, you know, I can see you know. I could see a victory for the US, but you know, I think British food is underrated. But as I said, it is just a mixture of like every single cuisine. And I don't think we have like right. you know, I think American food's a lot more distinct. Like, yeah, 
it's it seems more glamorous as well. Like a cheeseburger seems a lot more exciting than a shepherd's pie. So I can see why people would say, oh, American food is better. But, you know, it's for me to find out. I, I need to obviously, like, visit more places in America, like, see for myself. I can't know until yeah. I've tried it, man. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're just going to not do this round. It, it's just not fair. We're yeah. not going to do it. You don't just... want to rub salt into the wounds, you know. It's, right. I'm not that guy. Do... Yeah. I'm not yeah. that guy. Like I said, I'm humble. I, I We're humble people. You know, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to do that to you. So let's, <laughs> with that, <laughs> let's get out of here. Jamie, thank you so much. I know it's like, it's not too late for you, right? It's like seven, eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. You? It's it's 20 past seven. So it's not late at all, man. So yeah. So, and it's yeah, yeah. two two twenty for me. So do the math, people. I mean, <laughs> we're all from Pittsburgh. I don't know how good we are with math, but <laughs> <laughs> the, to be able to do this interview like this and to be able to set it up, I'm, I'm glad we did it, man. It's, it's awesome. Oh, it's just been really fun. I've really enjoyed it, man. It's great. I mean, I'm glad we talked about a lot of stuff, not just baseball. And it's good to to see the culture. And like, yeah, it's been it's been a good conversation. I really enjoyed it. All right, Jamie. Well, from across the pond, thank you for bucking around. Thank we'll you see guys. you guys later.